Now, I want to return because it is clearly occupying them and I think that all sides of the story have to be told. Um, so there are now two attack lines. Mainstream media are attacking Mr Peters on two fronts now. The Chumbawamba front, where either the spin-off or Tova O'Brien have rung Chumbawamba, who used to be a band, if you're under 60, I'll explain, used to be a band who had one hit wonder called I Get Knocked Down, I Get Up Again. And Chumbawamba are lefties. And so they've set Mr. Peters up by telling Chumbawamba that he nicked their music. Uh, and they've said, we think he's an a-hole. So that's the Chumbawamba flank of the main, main, mainstream media's attack on Winston Peters. And then there's the Nazi attack. And it is because Mr. Peters supposedly said that co-government was like the Holocaust. And that is the story that the mainstream media are going with. And they've been running around getting Jewish groups and other politicians. Surprise, surprise, Chris Hipkins thinks it's terrible. So they've got that. They're trying to get Chris Luxon to say he's going to fire Winston Peters, which is just the most ridiculous proposition you've ever heard. Um, but that's the other flank. Winston Peters' response is not to dig into the trenches and hope he can survive this vicious onslaught. Winston Peters counters counterattacks. And here's part of the counterattack. Here's the statement he put out yesterday, uh, which I'll read to you. Many in the mainstream media, good use of phrase, Winnie, have taken what was said in New Zealand First State of the Nation speech in Palmerston North on Sunday and deliberately, deceitfully and ignorantly misrepresented what I said and why I said it. The headlines and commentary on the news stated that I compared co-governance to the Holocaust. This line has been repeated over and over again. The blatant misreporting and subsequent outrage from some journalists is not only a disgraceful example of journalism, but yet another example of blatant political bias. Here is my full quote referring to the Māori Party co-leader Rawiri Waititi's previous comments about Māori having superior genetics. It was not ideological, just ideological theory. It was race-based theory, where some, people's DNA, where some people's DNA made them sadly, according to these people, and condoned by their cultural fellow travellers, their DNA made them somehow better than others. I've seen that sort of philosophy before. I saw it in Nazi Germany. We all did. We have seen it elsewhere in the world in the horrors of history, but right here in our country, tolerated by the very people whose job it is to keep the system honest. Those were the quotes. There was no mention of co-governance or the Holocaust. The clickbait, low-grade journalism being shown by some in our media is an insult to the public of New Zealand and to their very own profession. The dripping bias and subsequent outrage surrounding their self-determined inference of a comparison to the Holocaust, genocide, white supremacy and dictatorships from these journalists is writ large in their inconsistency when reporting on others. Co-leader of the Māori Party, Debbie Nare Wapaka, said this in her maiden speech. I stand here as a descendant of people who survived a Holocaust a genocide sponsored by the House and Members of Parliament. The Māori Party shared a screenshot of another user's post on Instagram which described the government's parties as white supremacists. The Māori Party described the government's repeal of the smoke-free reforms as amounting to genocide. RNZ reported on Posey Parker's event quoting the Executive Director of Auckland Pride saying... When you look back at Nazi ideology of the 30s, these things are very much aligned in terms of eradicating rainbow communities from public life. The former Green MP, Gowers Garriman, posted a photo on social media whilst attending the Posey Parker event and her accompanying words, so ready to fight the Nazis, referring to Posey Parker and women's rights protesters. Where was the outrage shown by those in the media about these examples of direct and specific comparisons to the Holocaust, genocide, Nazis 
and Nazi ideology? And when did the media rush down to the synagogue and ask about these statements? Not one of them did. Actually, Mr Peters, I did. The platform did at that very time. Not once in my speech did I mention anything of nor made comparisons to the horrific Holocaust or genocide, nor did I compare it to co-governance. I stated a fact that Waititi made public comments about a certain race and ethnicity having superior DNA to other races and ethnicities in our country, and that we have seen that before, knowing that is the seed of division, racism and the horrors of history. That statement I made is a fact. The moment you argue that one race has superior DNA to other races, you are leading to awful racial consequences. I am not backing down one iota. I want everybody in this country, no matter whether they're here for 1,000 years or here yesterday, legally to be treated the same, equally as one people. I make no apology for that. Now, I wanted you to read that to you in full because you will not read it in full in the mainstream media here. They will not publish the counterattack by Winston Peters or Mr Peters standing his ground because they're at war with him and they are telling lies collectively and individually, telling lies and being <coughs> absolute traitors to the profession of journalism. They wonder why it's falling apart apart from their inability to see a market change they wonder why people lose faith in them. Well, Tova, Benedict, Jenna and all, it is because of that childish, clearly biased, self-interested journalism that you practice. And I, for one, wish to commend Mr Peters for sticking to his guns and not being bullied. Not being bullied by those who would seek to drag him down simply because... He is not flavour of the month, month when they go to their Chardonnay sipping dinner parties in Greyland and Thornton and Newtown and I don't know where it's trendy in Christchurch or Dunedin. Um, but that's the fact of it. Um, Chris Hipkins is of course going to say the government's a mess. He's the leader of the opposition for goodness sake. And as for you jumping up and down, clutching your pearls at the press gallery, telling Chris Luxon he must get Mr Peters back under control. No, he mustn't. Mr Peters isn't out of control. He is, as we've heard this morning, doing a fine job as Foreign Minister of New Zealand and he's exercising his freedom of speech in a political context to, to, a context to talk to the party faithful without saying anything offensive or hurtful. And... Um, I don't know how long this battle with the news media, can, with the mainstream news media, can go on, um, but I know where my money is, and it's not on the pearl clutches who I sit next to on Mondays at the post cabinet press conference uh, at all.